Well guys, I'm here at my dad's house. We're heading out to the bushcraft camp in a minute, but really I'm looking to get a bit of a bigger saw because we are going to chop up some firewood today and hopefully get that log store going. And we want to chop up some bigger, bigger bits of wood really, bigger bits of deadfall. We've got one big dead tree that I really want to get uh, chopped up, but he's busy doing something here. Well, Dad, I know you are busy, but I was just telling the YouTubers we're going to the bushcraft camp and I need a big saw. A big saw? Have you got a big saw? A bigger big, than my little small one? I've got a big heap of kindling wood there. That's okay, sure. say. What, you using the old, we figured it's a bill hook from what most people said last video. Yeah, do you know what? One I think videos. there's a name on that. I don't know whether you'll read that, guys. What's that? Uh, I can't read it. I haven't got my reading glasses. Oh, it is Elwell. Someone said about, I think that's the two with the handle. Elwell, an yes. One. An English one. Elwell, yeah, I've heard oh, of that. There you go. I couldn't read it. Awesome. It says on there, <laughs> mine. Yeah. What about this saw then? Uh, well, there's a saw over there, what I call it, like a bow saw. See them hanging up by the... Uh, oh yeah, let's, ha let's have a look. Uh, I've got a bow saw here, this is what I call a bow That's saw. That's better than the one I've got, that'll cut some big trees. Well, it's got that lever there which you can change blades on. Yeah. But I don't sort of like it. I find that way. I don't know if you guys are the same. That's really but, bendy. Yeah, it's flexible. It's very flexible. And when I'm on my own doing a long sawing stroke, I find it twists and jams a bit. So I've got to be honest, I don't really use it. So I don't know what you can use. Um, I'm looking, don't move, just at the back of your head. What is that thing hanging up there? Is that a it's saw? It's an ornament. It's an antique ornament. That one up there. Yeah, that is epic. Well, obviously it's a saw, but I don't think it's ever been used. <laughs> is that two people, one on each end? I guess, yeah, like the old Canadian, American, North American type of saw. But it's very, it's quite narrow. But I mean, it's up to Do you reckon we could use it? That would be awesome to use at the camp. It requires a physical effort. That's the only thing, and it needs sharpening. It's up there. It's been up there for all the years I know. And uh, I think it was my dad's before me, just as an ornament, we've never ever used it. But Do you yes. think you could sharpen that though? Really? Well, Generally. I can sharpen it, I've got the workshop in there. So but, you... but not today, not okay. today. I want to finish all this kindling. This is not for the camp, this is for my log burner in the house. But I've got a good heat there, but by all means, tomorrow I'll get this done, backed up, and if Which... you want, if you want, I yes. will do the work of filing it, but you've got to get on the other end and use some physical effort. Certainly a big one. That's what I'm gonna call a big saw. You're gonna ask me what it is, and do you know what? I don't know. Very, very worn on the handles here, because it would be. I'm not sure. I don't see what well, I've done is I just had it up for years and years, just as like an ornament. I see no names on it, but I've painted it, obviously trying to preserve it. And I figure that's going to stick, you know, if I try and saw it through the wood. What I find, I might have to strip that paint off because I think that's going to stick in the wood, you know, in the joint. It's going to, going to, I might have to strip all that off. So, Mike, thanks a lot, buddy. You've given me a lot of work. Tighten those nuts up, a little bit of movement there. But what I don't understand are those teeth, which obviously every single one's got to be recut to get an edge on them because they're just worn over and don't forget the paint on them. Let's get in the workshop, see what we can do. I'm going to run the camera along these because they're not all even. There's a, there's a fixed pattern to these and I'm not really sure how to approach it, you know? Well, I've got it in the vice, but look, this is my dilemma. I know some of these angles I can just make out as a bit of an angle and I know to file the edges on those, but I don't understand really. It's, there's a conformed pattern here. They're not just all a row of teeth. There's two here, let's say that's a pair, hopefully you can see that there. Let's move this, oh, lead, why do I have so much lead? Let's roll that over the way. Two here, then this is one, two, three, four. Then that two shape again. Then the one, two, three, four, and then the two. Now, as you can see, on this particular tooth, that's the first of the batch of four along there. Hoping you can see that there's the chamfer, there's the angle there. There's the angle there. And I know from saws previously, they reverse them. So the angle of the chamfer is that side, and on this tooth is this side. And yet, what I don't understand is, on this one here, which is that funny double one, so we've got a row of four either side that with cutting edges on, it appears, in fact, I can look, there's no cutting edge on that. Or if there is, it's very, very small. Is it? Is it just... That, is that... Is that all it is? And then maybe reversed the other side, in which case 
Why don't they have even teeth alternately either side? Why have we got a row of four and we've got those two? Do you bushcraft people out there? Do you woodsmen must obviously know what this is? Give us some tips on it. I'm going to file it as best I can. See what we can do. And I'll tell you the measurements as well. Exactly to the inch. Five feet long. But when I've been in Canada and I see those swords, they are a lot wider blade on them. The actual point to the base of the blade here is... And allowing for wear, because this is an old one, I've got a fraction under two inches. Well, allowing for it to be worn over the years, I guess that's two inches, two inches wide, five feet long. I started here, but then I got really close at the top end, each end by the handle of the shaft, where it was obviously never going to get a woodcut. And I've noticed that these ones, these funny little double ones, don't have an edge to them. Now, it looks like it's got an edge because I started putting an edge on them. But when I looked at the ones at the top, which aren't worn, in fact, if I come along here a little bit, there's another one. It's just there. They're flat. Now, I wonder if these four are the cutting blades and that is the clearing blade. Does that make sense? So these four cut on the stroke backwards and forwards. And these ones, these ones are designed to clear any loose timber out to make the next cut clean. Okay, we've got that uh, buffed off pretty well, got all that black paint on, which I probably shouldn't have put on in the first place, but it's saved a lot of the, I suppose, metal from going rusty. Bit of rust underneath, but I've got that off with some memory paper as well. And this is what I should have put on there, really. So it's called, I don't know what it's called, it's just a brand name, something, something. I'm not gonna give them a plug, they don't give us any money. Ultimate protector for any exposed metal parts, it is. A metal barrier spray. Just spray it on. I don't know if it's like an oil or what it's like. And that creates like a seal on there. And because I've got it now, oh that's much better. That's the original. That's the original metal there. Look, coming back. Oh really old dark, dark metal. And hopefully the next stage will be get Michael on the other end of it. Well guys, Dad has been ever so kind as to sharpen the saw. We think. We, we think and we hope it's going to work. We're going to test it out. This is a log I've actually cut with my handsaw uh, from a tree. It's a fallen tree and I cut with my handsaw to make a small bench back in like Bushcraft Camp Update 2 or something I think it was. Um, but this is perfect. It's already fallen down. It's up off the ground. <clears throat> it's got the right leverage. As we cut here this this downward pressure will be coming from there so hopefully the blade shouldn't pinch as well fingers we're, crossed we're hoping to go what about two foot wide we're going to yeah, make a there. bench really aren't we that table is, bench kind of thing that there. Um, that we're there. We'll try it. so we reckon about two feet we've never done this before no guys never <laughs> done this before i don't think dad's ever sharpened a saw like this before not that size not that long um it's a pretty cool looking sword i have to admit um but we're going to give it a go probably start off quite slowly and uh, it, look, it might not work, guys. If it doesn't, we've got the fire going anyway and we're going to cook some food. And you can saw this with your... Uh, and I can saw it with my, my little folding uh, Laplander saw, but it will take me a while. I'll tell you why we... I now know, because I, I used to do old stuff years ago. If you look on the end here, I'll just show it. See those? If you look here, there's a square nut. There's a hex yeah. nut. That's a modern one. A square nut, I think, is either Victorian old or school. Edwardian. It's very, very, very old. So somebody can look that up. But I know for a fact, when I used to do old antiques, a square nut was what we look for to you know give us yeah. some sort of we'll age or provenance. Yeah. Close up in a minute. Right, let's give it a go. Let's get set up and get ready for some exercise. So pull. Yeah. So uh, the main thing is, I think we don't push. Okay. I think you're pulling that way. Pull. I don't. Yeah, you. Okay. And the, then you the, pull the, your way. Exactly. I think the cutting stroke is the pull. Let's just get it. So Are we get it straight first. Right. You ready? do the first pull. Ready? Pull. Now, I'll tell you what we've also got to do, we've got to keep it dead level, the actual vertical. You've oh, okay, yeah. Ready? Nice and smooth.
It's not easy, it's not a chainsaw, is it? There's no petrol involved in this one. I'll tell you what, it's quite satisfying, that Mike, seeing that. It is really, it's, it feels like you're getting back with your ancestors, you know, I like you. But, problem is, all saw cutters know, we're just starting to get pinched, we're halfway through this already. Now, I don't know, I really don't know. I'm wondering if we should make a wedge or maybe tap your axe in there just to split that and open it a bit. Because it's pinching below. the blade, isn't it? Yeah, maybe. Maybe we should be. I mean, should we should we have put another log under here to take a bit of strain to stop that spring in us because that's closing the gap? Yeah. I mean, it's, what it's doing is, I mean, it's an antique blade. I'm more worried about the handles, actually. Your screws. Because it. if these are like 80 or 100 years old, crack, away it goes, we're stuffed. Because yeah. I don't know what this wood is. It's hickory, ash, I don't know what it is. But I wonder, should we be putting a... Should we put a little... Because it's well, deep enough to it? put should a wedge in there. Exactly. Let's... Should we just put a little wedge or something like that? Let's make a wedge. And it might just open it up. And I feel if we support under here... Yeah. ...and stop that springing us. So bear with us, guys. <clears throat> We're learning all the time. Just get that under there, like low him down. Yeah, that's it. Stop the spring. Yeah. Stop the spring. Solid. Brilliant. And I reckon if we try and get a little wood wedge there... Yeah, let's make a wedge. Chop one with your axe. Come on! Yes! yes! Awesome! That was brilliant. I'll tell you what, there's a, there's a rhythm to it. You see what we've whacked through there, look. That's look, impressive. That, I... it's, it's good. Wait, look, so that's an antique saw. Yeah. We don't know what the hell we're doing as far as rhythm or anything like that. I think uh, we it got was, It was more power. You almost have to... It was pull. It was all about pulling, wasn't it? We made a big mistake, guys. We cut from the end. Yeah. And the fallen tree roots there, so it's very, very springy. That's why we try to pack it up here, just to get some rigidity. If we wanted to cut the base off, I feel we, it would have flown it through it, it had no problem at all. So listen, it must be what the cave people did, if they even had saws, is they must have, everybody must have been learning, learning, learning. Constantly, yeah. Constantly learning, how, why is this, why is it going wrong? And working things out. That's why the human species is at the top of the food chain. I mean, I don't know what the name of this saw is. No, you guys might help us on that. But it's... It, I know they get some absolutely monstrous ones, don't they? But well, this I said, is... When I was working on it in the uh, workshop, I'm th sure the Canadians and North Americans have a wide blade to it. Yeah, thicker. Maybe that gives it more rigidity. Because well, I is... reckon this is like a, an English woodsman's type of thing. Yeah, it's really impressive, but the handles were starting to go, weren't they, on that last one? Well, bit? listen, if it's 100 years old, I'll be starting to go. <laughs> We've cut a tree with a 100-year-old tool. So, we want another one of these. Yeah. And then we can oh, get then we're some try and make some sort of tabletop on the. And we've got food to cook as well. And we're going to have a cook up as well. We need to after this. <laughs>
Okay, after all that sawing with that long saw, food time, fire's going well, Billy's on, tea's on the way. We're going to have ham, cooked ham there. We're going to have eggs. Well, you guys out there must have heard of ham and eggs. And better still, a little bit of cheese there. I've got a container. I've got some parboiled potato which I'm going to cut. So we're actually going to fry up and have ham, eggs and home fries. Okay, so it's a she, it's a huge piece of ham. I'm going to cut and shave some thin slices off of this and fry it up. It's really good. The best ham we actually had, I think we ever had, what they call it, Canadian bacon or Canadian ham. It was really, really nice. Get good stuff in Europe as well, Danish. All Danish stuff. Look at that, man alive. You can eat this cold as well. Don't forget this is cooked, but I'm going to fry this up with the eggs. That, that looks really good. Hopefully it will. I don't want to cut it too thick, because if you cut it too thick, it will take too long to fry. Basically being cooked, we're just perking it up again. Look at that, lovely. I'm starving now. I know, it's making me hungry, just looking at it. You've got a little cutting pad below that That's as well. That's about enough. There is a little, yeah, we bought a little cutting pad. You can roll that, it's easily packable, isn't it? Well, this is it. It's lightweight, it's plastic. I reckon that's probably good enough for yeah, us. Yeah, it's a good amount. Yeah, it's got eggs as well. Uh, we've got eggs, got cheese. Now I'm just going to dice these guys up. They are, look, you see the knife flies through them like that. That's because so, it's a Scandi grind. No, it's because <laughs> the wife has parboiled them. <laughs> and I'm just going to loosely cube these up to make my home fries. And we've bought two frying pans this time. We're not messing around this time. We're, not, we're going for it. We're not going to die of starvation, <laughs> for sure. It was about minus two this morning, wasn't it, with that fog? Minus two, yeah. It was minus three when I woke up, but minus two now. It's cold, that's for sure. Some spuds, should I put them on? Yeah, scatter them in to keep the... Uh... This one? Yeah, watch it, don't splash it. Oh. 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 Okay, guys, so the fat is hot. Didn't look it, did it? No, it certainly didn't. All of it? No. Yeah, all the loose stuff. Oh yeah, this is going to be awesome, I can tell. That's cooking, that is cooking. Obviously these uh, home fries will take a bit longer to do than the eggs and the ham. That's on the move now. Oh yes, on for the ham. This is so good. I can smell that cooking already. Ooh. Well, people talk about you're taking eggs out into the camp. Well, why not? Listen, all you've got to go is in a camping shop. They must be everywhere. And get some of these hard containers. And they just pop shut. Put them in the back of your backpack. You can do your eggs as well. And of course, rather than leave any rubbish, if you want to put the old eggshells back in there, take them back, you can do, or eggshells on here, on the fire, you can burn them down, you take back an empty container. The home fries are well on the way. It's getting cooked. Well, it's cooked anyway, but look, it's getting a nice, crispy edge to it. What I'm going to do, because the home fries are done, I'm going to put this ham to finish cooking. It's so hot this side, I can't tell you. Let's get that spatula over the top of the home fries like that. And then there's a bit of juice coming out of this ham, going to cover over those home fries. That fatty juice is going to go all into the home fries. And it gives me space here for the eggs. We'll be doing trips out, you know, like this. Yeah, People right. would be guiding, they want a guided trip, a cooking guided trip. trip. Yeah, see if we can get all the shell in here. Nothing wrong with a bit of shell, calcium is it? Well we take the grill off, we're just losing a bit of heat in the fire, we got it down on the coals. We're making a scrambled egg now. Much easier doing it this way. And just chop it up and it all gets cooked. I wonder who's going to get the most here and who did the most sawing. I suppose <laughs> it really is 50-50 with those saws. With that big old school saw. The taste test. The taste test, guys. We've got the table over here now. Yeah. We're, all that saw is worthwhile. And this is definitely going to be worthwhile. Smelling amazing. And tea as well. Ham eggs, home fries. Mm. That is awesome. Those home fries are really good. 
not difficult to put in your knapsack either. Mm. That's really nice. Mm. That is really nice. Don't think I'll be um, having plastic knives and forks again anytime soon. No. <laughs> From Mum. <laughs> Thanks, Mum. From our Mum. Better than nothing. <laughs> it is. Why don't you tell us what you think your best meal in the camp is? Mm.